Aerodynamics has always been important in motor racing, but early on, the engineers only thought it mattered in terms of trying to make the cars go as fast as possible in a straight line. So the pre-Second World War designs were very streamlined. The curved metal was just intended to offer as little air resistance as possible. It was all about straight line speed in those days. And my goodness, those cars were extraordinarily fast in a straight line. Formula One cars are like aircraft, but upside down. They're creating lift, but they're creating lift in the opposite sense. We're pushing the tires into the ground. The only bit that actually touches the ground are the tires. So as much downforce as you can have, it's just key to going faster through those phases. We talk about the huge accelerations that we see on a Formula One car. These are up to five, six G lateral longitudinal accelerations. Aerodynamics is the single and prime performance differentiator on a Formula One car. So that's also why we dedicate a lot of resource, a lot of focus on aerodynamics. So how do we study aerodynamics in Formula One? Really, there are three worlds for our engineers. There's a world of computational fluid dynamics. So this is a virtual world. This is a world of numbers and big, big computers that are studying and analyzing the flow. The second world is the wind tunnel. This is where we are empirical testing 60% scale models, blowing wind over a scale model, and we're measuring the loads that are created. And that allows us to understand if we've come up with new designs that we want to try and put on the car, whether we think that they will be good or bad for the aerodynamic characteristics of the car. The third world is the car, the real world itself. On the car, we have a mass of pressure tappings, load sensing, and from those, we're able to look at the real world aerodynamic loads that are created. What we're looking for is tiny percentage improvements. These are fractions of percent of performance increments, which we accumulate and ultimately make that performance that difference. In the pursuit of performance, Formula One cars started to look at how can we maximize the grip. People realized that if they put wings on Formula One cars that created a downforce, you had more grip and therefore you had more performance. This started in the early 60s and subsequently we started to look at ground effects where we had diffusers that were creating downforce. The ground effect regulations for 2022 are effectively a reconfiguring of regulations that were banned in the, in the 80s. And, and going back to an old set of regulations is a really challenging and rewarding part of the development of the car. Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsport, always has a technical challenge, We're always looking ahead to how we can find ways in which we can find more performance. Our analysis tools, our virtual analysis, simulation, machine learning, all of those tools make us quicker, more efficient, more effective at finding these small, many marginal gains that add up to being the most performant product. From our point of view, I think it's extremely exciting what's going to be available in the future and some of the opportunities that are going to be available to us in terms of machine learning and, and just raw computing power mean that we'll, we'll see some very exciting changes in that area in the future. One of the reasons that Formula One cars always get faster is that the engineers are always asking themselves, how can we find more speed? And that's what Formula One is really, a relentless pursuit of speed via technology. One of the key things for any F1 aerodynamics team is to understand what their tools are telling them and converting that into a race car which is stable and can generate the, the optimum lap time.